battlefield in my world. It's the dance floor. Pán Boh už urobil, čo treba. Teraz sa vyhýbajte pridať. Hop! 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 Milan, prišli sme, lebo v meste skočil podľa chlapec. Na čo ste prišli, keď je to samovražda? Niekde sa stala chyba. Tma zvýťazila nad svetlom. Ja tam dúfam, že nerobíš somariny. Prisahaj, že neklameš. Prisahám. Ty sa ako ho považuješ? Na čo si prišiel? Pusť ma! Náš chlapec nic zle neurobil. Ja svojmu synovi verím. A ja svojmu. Mali by sme ísť na policiu. Už nikdy. Ty a niekto od vás nevolajte. Ty čo si myslíš? Kto si? Ja mám strach, že mi tiež niečo urobia. Prosím, odkažte mne na môj pokoj. My všetci by sme mali pestovať naše spoločenstvo práve tak, aby sme sa nemuseli báť. Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Melina Putrevis Murti. I'm the Festival Co-Director of Europe on Screen 2021. And right now we will have a Europe on Screen 2021 film talk session with the director of our movie from Slovakian movie, Let There Be Light, Mr. Marko Skop. Mr. Marko Skop, hi, how are you? Oh, so you're still un uh, muted actually. Okay. Yes. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, great. Yes, yes. I can Hello. hear you perfectly. Hello. Good Hi, morning. how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are time right now? Are, are you in Slovakia right now? Uh, actually, I'm in Croatia, but ah. it's <laughs> the same Central Eastern European time. So it's 11 a.m. here. Ah, okay. So yeah. it's, it looks like a very bright uh, Sunday. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. What time it is in Jakarta? Right now it's actually 4 p.m. Okay. So good, after, good afternoon to all the viewers. 
<laughs> Thank you. So yes, before we start the webinar, uh, please let me uh, just explain the rules of the webinar. For everyone, please notice that the session uh, is being recorded and right now it's be, uh, being streamed live in our YouTube at Europe on screen. And the, all the participants here, include uh, the attendees, are all muted so that it gives us the speaker uh, the sound can be heard more clearly, but all the participants, if you have question, please uh, just put your question directly into the small button below with the Q&A button. And if you want to ask uh, Mr. Parko in Indonesian language, please do so and I will help you to translate them to English. And all the session today will be conducted uh, in English. So yes, uh, I would like to begin uh, with a huge appreciation for your film, Let There Be Light. It's a, it's a film that really, really got uh, one thinking, well, especially me, I got a lot of uh, very much intrigue in my mind after watching your film. Well, what was the first inspiration for you to produce the film? In the core of the film uh, was the theme of the upbringing of children from the point of view of the father, yeah. who would like to do the best for his youngsters. He would like to raise them in a different way than he was raised from his father. He would like to give them more opportunities. He would like them to study, but he makes mistakes because in the crucial moments of their life, he is not present. Yes. As he's working in Germany as a guest worker, as a economical migrant, in yes. order to provide for his family. So when he comes back home, I, I, I can hear the children there in the background. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm at my parents, so I have my nephews and <laughs> my nieces, actually. So you can hear the children's yeah. sounds, yes. So it's a little bit connected to our topic. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. So this, this uh, was the impetus or the first impulse. Yeah. And then I have made a lot of research among the guest workers in the remote regions of Slovakia mm. about their family constellations. So I have modeled kind of a happy, go lucky kind of man, a cheerful man yes. Yes. Uh, who comes back home for Christmas and he finds out that something terrible is happening inside his family. Yes. Uh, so, so is it also like a custom, a customary to do for people in Slovakia, like what we landed to work abroad and like in Germany and then after that going back during the winter, uh, during the Christmas? Uh, Slovakia is a not big country. It's, it has 5 million inhabitants, but the life, social and economical life really very much differs in which part of the country you live. Mm -hmm. so, for example, the capital uh, of the country, Bratislava, is uh, very well economically developed. But uh -huh. you have also these remote areas where people do not have so many opportunities for good wages, there are even job problems. So many of them go abroad. Women go mostly to the neighboring country, Austria. They work oh. there as carers for elderly people. Oh. Uh, and men you know, travel to Western Europe. You know, G Germany is one of the preferred countries. So the men, uh, the male worker will go to the Western Europe for more physical work, and then the female were also going to another, to like Austrian part, as you said, as a caregiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I think it's even much more complicated with women who have oh. smaller children or yeah. children under age of eighteen that they travel for two weeks to Austria. Mm -hmm. They care there for elderly people and then they come back home for another two weeks so I think the families back home are struggling because of it mm -hmm. yes and as uh, you earlier mentioned that uh, you the inspiration of making this film is also part from the upbringing of a family but it is also but through your film we can also see how bullying plays a part and then also how 
peer pressure and even somehow I can feel a kind of like a social critics towards the church uh, in, in the film itself. So I was just wondering uh, how was it uh, with, the, with the dynamic of the bullying? Was it also much uh, feel in the outer skirt compared to Bratislava as a capital city? One of the inspirations coming from reality is the existence of the paramilitary groups of young people. Yes. This is phenomena which really exists in Slovakia. They are oh. indoctrinated by nationalism. Uh, so it's this one of the phenomena of our uh, really divided societies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I wanted to cover this political social phenomena also in the film. And in this yeah. paramilitary group, as in every closed group, there is this hierarchy of power. You know, they are playing that they are little soldiers, so it's kind of like of, of an army. Yes. And in the hierarchy of power for the leader, it's always important to show who is the boss. And the mm. bullying is the part of it. You know, they find the yeah. weakest point, the weakest boy in my case, mm -hmm. to show off. And it can have really brutal consequences. Yes. And then also, I, well, when I saw your film, I, I understand that the raising of the neo-Nazi or paramilitary kind of uh, group is very much a concern right now in Europe. But I've never thought that it could also happen in the eastern part of Europe, like in Slovakia or Croatia. Uh, that's why when we saw your film, this is something that is new and we never seen it happen. And this is why we brought your film to be screened here in Indonesia. So, and Milan as a father, uh, how gradually he's changing from his happy-go-lucky person, riding his bike, going back home <laughs> in the beginning, and then bringing this robotic dog, it's, it's just uh, really amazing. How did you manage to convince him to do uh, the part of Milan, which is actually the same character as his real name? <laughs> uh, it's an actor, actually. It's not himself. It's not a documentary film. It's just coincidence that the actor Milan Ondrik has the same first name. Actually, it's not coincidence. I've been working with him as an actor also in my previous previous film where he was a living actor. And when I was starting to write the script for Let There Be Light, I had him in my mind already. So when, when, I, when I was writing the dialogues and yes. I was writing the scenes, I saw him. So maybe I, unconsciously, I put the name to the script Milan too. <laughs> Because you already had the imagination of him in your... <laughs> yes, yes, because I really adore him as an actor. I loved the experience, the previous experience that we had together. So yes. he was, for me, the, the number one for this film. Yeah, he, I mean, he's really good. You, you, you've got a really great actors there. Like, that's why he is also awarded as the best actor in Kalava Pipari, isn't it? Yes, and I'm very happy for him because yes. yeah, for this recognition, uh, this accolade, I, I think he really deserved it. Yes, that's true. And how about the three little children? So from uh, Dallas, yeah. The, the most important for me was the, the oldest one. Yes. Uh, his name in the film is Adam because you know, the main conflict in the film is between them, between the father mm. and the oldest son. And I've been searching for the actor or somebody who could play this role for almost half a year. Also with the help of my friends, we made many castings around Slovakia. Hmm. And at the end of the day, I was really happy that I have found uh, a young actor, František Beleš, because for his age of 17, he was really, you know, very mature as a person. And he was yeah. able able uh, to all these nuances and all this spectrum of emotions to really bring on screen. So I'm very grateful for his performance too. Yes, Mr. Bellas is uh, as a 17 years old kid. Like he could basically also transfer her grad, uh, his gradual emotion from someone that oh I'm pretending to be tough, and then at the end 
yes, I need my father to protect me. That's really something that uh, creates a dynamic in your mood. And also the the who is the, the uh, I forgot the name of the of the character, the father of the kids who who was who was who was committed suicide. He was also really good, even though he was just like some part of it, but he's really good. His name is Chongor Kasai. He's a renowned actor in Slovakian Czech Republic. Ah. He's acti- acting a lot. Okay. Yeah. So, That's yeah. why his face is familiar. Yeah. Actually, I really appreciate and love working with, that, with actors. So I, I was very happy with all the team. We have, we have made before, we have started the shooting a lot of acting rehearsals. Mm-hmm. So that we touch the temperature of every crucial scene so that the actors understand not only their character in the wholeness from the beginning to the end, the development of their character, but also so that uh, the actors really feel uh, the temperature and nuances of every scenes, of every interconnection. So we made this before the shooting and I think it helped us all a lot because when we started the process of the creation of the film, everybody was ready. Mm. And when you, when, what was actually the biggest challenge actually when you do, like for example, like when you do the rehearsal or on where you prepare all the production for this film? Uh, the biggest problem for us came from the mother nature and it was during oh, no. the shooting of the film. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have, I have modeled the story happening during the Christmas time, which is the yeah. biggest holiday for, for Christians. And here in our part of the world, it's during the winter. So I wanted a lot of snow in the film. I wanted a lot of sun in the film so that there is this contrast between the light and the shadows because there are things in front of our main character which are in the dark, which he doesn't see. Mm. But there is also the light. It's like the new information is coming to him and uh, the process that he gets through, uh, the enlightenment which he goes through. Mm -hmm. But this winter, it was actually three years ago, was almost without the snow. Even oh, no. in the region where we have shot, uh, it's called Orava, and there is always, you know, one meter of snow. But that particular winter, <laughs> it just wasn't happening. So first, first we had to shoot only the interior scenes. We were waiting for the snow. It came then. We shot two, we shot two days the snow. But then it again disappeared. So it was mostly the problem production-wise how to schedule the shooting because of these external problems, force majeure, which you cannot influence. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I would never thought about that, actually, because the film felt, I mean, you can see all the snow, even though in Germany and also when he got back home, it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, you cannot fight Mother Nature. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have now already questions from our audiences. Um, one is from Abdul Aziz Muhammad. Uh, he was asking, is there any specific reason for setting Let There Be Light in Slovakia? Because when I watch the film, I think it's quite a distinctive rural area. Distinctive? I didn't understand. Yeah, so uh, because uh, he said that when he watched the film, it is quite a uh, very rural, like very out, out about in the area. So originally I'm a Slovak, I'm coming, I was born in the eastern part part of Slovakia Mm -hmm. and Slovakia is mostly a rural country still. Uh, Until 1918, it was the part of the Austrian Hungarian empire and it was mostly rural. Uh, When you compare it with Czech Republic, Uh, In Czech Republic, there was much more industry. It was very developed country economically, but not not Slovakia. So it's this heritage, which, you know, it's connected also to the present life. Uh, And we've been shooting this film in the real environments, which really exist. Uh, The region Orava, where we have been shooting, is bordering with Poland, it's in the northern part of Slovakia, and uh, yeah. 
uh, all which is created there in the art design or art direction uh, really exists. Of course, we a little bit, you know, changed things for the for the shooting for the for the film scene, but it's coming out of from reality. Hmm. So everything, including the church scene, the cathedral, the the way where he just walk around the the, the nature, that was basically already on the set on the order of like in the village directly. Yes, yes, yes. Oh wow! For example, when you if you remember the scene in the bedroom of the yes. family, there is this closet with the military collection. Yeah. When I was making the research. I have found such a closet with Malitaria in some particular uh, bedroom of one family. Oh. So we, it was the direct inspiration. Hey, from your family? No, from my own family. I've been making ah. the research among the guest workers. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ah, wow. So this, they do have that kind of... And also, I, I was, I was so, also always impressed with the living room with the art and then uh, it was so perfectly, well, for me, the way I see it, it was just like very, very particular with also with the painting in the background mm -hmm. and the Christmas. Is it also something that's common? This was recreated for the film, but it's very common. People have in their living rooms, pictures of the life that they would like to live. Ah, you know, uh, okay. I dream about the leaf on by the sea. Yeah, by the beaches. The palms, or somebody yeah. has, you know, big, beautiful hills or some kitschy sunrise. Yeah, this is yeah, part of how we uh, arrange our environments to feel better. <laughs> That's really interesting. I mean, because we saw that kind of thing too here in Indonesia in the rural village, like some village uh, that really, really secluded, they sometimes have this kind of painting, but not particular in their living room but maybe like in the, in the dining room something like that but yeah like you said it's something that uh, a place to resemble a place where they want to be that's yes. that's really interesting so you see it's it's universal all around the yeah world. yeah that's true uh, okay now they have also another question from uh, Mr. Gaston Suhadi in line with your mission does the film make an impact to the audience especially the youth in your country that's his first question. I will, I will give you the, the second question after that. If the film had the influence on the young viewers yeah. in the country. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, besides the classical theatrical release and distribution, we've been organizing also uh, projections or screenings for the high school students. Hmm. So uh, I, I think around 5,000 students saw the film as a part of their school program. And there were also, there, it was curated, there were discussions with them. So yeah, I can only have hope that it had some influence, that it opened eyes of some people. Yeah. How was their response, Marco? Were they eagerly questioning you something? I, I think that those who are convinced in their particular point of view on the world were not influenced. But as we all know, young people are searching for they are the identities in this period of their of their life, True. and they are very easily influenced, as we also see in the film. <laughs> it's yeah, like what Adam did. Yes, in the film. Yes, that's so I, true. I, I hope also our film show them how how dangerous it could be uh, to get influenced by ideologies, to get mm. influenced by friends who have uh, extreme point of view on things. Mm -hmm. So if if one centimeter somewhere here in their state of mind got in doubt or changed something then our film fulfill its mission. Yes, then it's already, <laughs> if you touch one person already, and then yes, it's already make a change. That's a really good point of view. So Gaston also asking his second question, does the government do anything with regard to the rise of youth parliamentary groups in your country? Uh, what the government has to do is to play according to the law. And of course, the propagation of fascism 
is forbidden by the law. But there is this tiny line, what you can do or, do it, or, or what you cannot do. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, also this extreme far-right party is also part of the parliament or house of the parliament. Mm. So uh, the fight of the authorities with them is mostly happening in the political way among the adults. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god if you, if okay you, if, you, if you understand me but yeah I, I i see it as a common problem almost everywhere in the world the far right you have in the parliament you know you have marie le pen in france now in germany yeah. Yeah, this weekend there are the these are the elections days and you have the yes. afd party so the far right is on the rise. They want to be visible. They want the media coverage and these paramilitary groups are part of it. So I have a hope that the authorities and the law is trying to deal with them, but it always have to deal with them according to the law. I see. But I can also feel that in your uh, film that the society themselves were, were hesitant or maybe a little bit afraid of having the authorities like police to, to solve the problem because they were also kind of afraid of the church. Is, is that true? Like the church plays also important in this I, situation? I, I see it as a reality in every conservative society or closed mm. society that there is this imaginary and uh, symbolical order of the society yeah. where you as an individual are in a really tough position if you step against it. Uh, so if the majority of the others follow some path, some rule, yeah. some route, it's really uh, very complicated to, to be against because uh, if you are not with us, you are against us. Yeah, that's <laughs> you are true. not a friend, you're my neighbor, you can become a, a, an enemy. Yeah, I... and and regarding the church, it has some uh, historical context in Slovakia. I will try to be brief. During the Second World War, the Slovak state was a puppet state of the Nazi Germany, and the president mm -hmm. of this state was a Catholic priest. There were Catholic priests involved in this totalitarian regime mm -hmm. at the time. They did send 70,000 Jews to the concentration camps, for example. And there is still some sentiment towards this regime among even some priests and believers in Slovakia till nowadays. So yes. this is also what I wanted to cover and show in the film. I see. Okay. I think we can see that too. It's also uh, what you're saying earlier that if you're not with us, then you're against us. That's really basically uh, <laughs> what one of the characters actually mentioning in your film. So we also have a question from our YouTube viewers here. Uh, well, Leonardo Chandra was asking in a Indonesian language, uh, he was asking uh, whether the sol what is the solution for the xenophobia uh, in the movie, that scene in the movie uh, will not happen again. Are, are there any solution that you could uh, advise via this film? Uh, discussion about the consequences, what can happen if we will follow these opinions and concrete examples, what can happen. And this is what I wanted to model in our film. Uh, mm a little bit shocking story that could open the eyes of, of somebody. Yeah. So because uh, we are living in the internet world so much influenced by the social media and we are living in the bubbles as we all yes. know and see. Uh, and if we are discussing only with our friends who say, who have the same perspective on things as ourselves, Mm. We are very, very easily, uh, we can get very easily manipulated. Yeah, that's true. It, it's so, happening. Uh, I, I, I'm seeing these times as some kind of uh, the ending of the enlightenment, which was brought to us in this uh, coming from Europe, some from the Western rationalistic philosophy. But we see a big crisis of the authorities 
I mean, somebody, you know, there are many people who say, who do not believe the doctors, the scientists. You know, half of yeah. Slovakia even until vac- today <laughs> is vaccinated and wants to be vaccinated and the second half doesn't want. And people yes. are living in these, in these bubbles. And if there is no discussion and interaction between them, uh, I, I think we are going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean, well, about the vaccinated issues, I think we also face the same thing here in Indonesia. No, no, really, really <laughs> imagine that the, I don't know, world trade collapses, we will come to the yeah. big economical crisis, uh, yes. we can have a civil war. Yeah. Actually, at the moment, I'm staying here in the flat in Croatia, there were these mm. Balkan wars 25 years ago, you know, the, the war yeah. amongst the, the citizens. Of course, I do not want to see this black scenario, but uh, without a discussion among us, uh, yeah, we, we are living in a tricky, tricky times. Yes, not only tricky, but also hard. But I can totally, I totally agree with you. The advice that you give more discussion to open more talks about the issue and not only among yourself that have the same perspective, but with people coming from different countries and with different perspectives, that would also raise help to, of, and raising the awareness of the issue itself. And hopefully, like you said, if you can change a little bit trigger in your brain, <laughs> only one person, that's already a success. That's so true. Oh, we have also another uh, question from the audience uh, from uh, Bambang Junaidi. Hi, Marco. I find your film, Let There Be Light, is very reflecting. I'm speechless at the end, actually. So we will not uh, <laughs> make a spoiler of the end, but I love the end, actually, uh, at the end, actually, the, the very scene at the end. The film gives a sense of masculinity, masculinity that is very emotional and fragile, something that we rarely see on screen, let alone from Eastern European films. How do you define or see masculinity in general? We live in the, or we have lived in the patriarchal society. Yeah, I like the voice of your children. How many do you have? <laughs> <laughs> there, there are not my children. They're my nephews. <laughs> ah, that's nice. Yeah, say my hello. Sorry to about that. Yes, yeah. sorry. No, no, it's, it's 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 really really very nice. Uh, so traditionally. We were living in the patriarchal society, you know, in the name of father is you know, the slogan above it. Uh, and it's slowly changing. Uh, I see it like the way how my grandfather was raising my father and the way my father was raising me was a bit different. And how I tried to raise my daughter is again some, you know, different curve. And we are changing it slowly, but it's so deep in these orders within our cultures that it will take time. And I wanted to show it also in the film, uh, this masculinity, which is toxic, but also fragile, because yes. it can be dis- it, it is being disturbed almost on a daily basis on the, yeah. what people are you know, thinking about it, talking about it, but it's still the I- identity of many men. And, you know, yeah. losing the identity that you have can be destroying for yourself. You cannot change who you are easily if you are an adult person. <laughs> so, yeah, I wanted to touch this, this topic in the film. Also, how Milan was raised by the grandfather in the film yeah. is what he wants to change towards his children. He, was, he doesn't want to repeat the mistakes of his father. But Milan makes his own mistakes. True, that is so true. This is also something that uh, quite interesting because we try as much as we could not to pass or not to continue. Sorry about the. <laughs> no, no, I'm, sorry I'm, about the. the it's yeah, okay. So, yeah, uh, we try not to continue the the the, the raising or the, the the teaching from or or whatever how pa- how our parents raised us. We try to avoid certain things, but then at the end, like what Milan did, he kind of trapped whether uh, on on a decision of whether he would like to do something to make a change while raising uh, raising his children, but also 
uh, not to repeat what his father has done to him. So I will. I I really love the the scene where uh, he and Ada has to do this competition of push up. Was that? I felt that kind of like a, a kind of like a personal scene. Was that? I was just wondering. Was that inspired by your own personal experience? Like, okay, if you win, then I will follow your 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 suggestion. But if 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 you if you don't win, then you will follow my suggestion. That was that was a good solution for the father and the and the son. Yeah. Now I do not have this personal <laughs> experience myself. It was scripted for the film. I have modeled it. Uh, it's the in the creative process. I just came to this idea. Uh, the fight against them to show also in the physical way. Uh, mm. So it was scripted. But that, yeah, but uh, but maybe there are other. There were other personal experience that you. Uh, try to insert in the in the film. Uh, other inspirations from real life. Yeah, from, from yeah, from your personal experience. Uh, from my personal experience. Whew, I think every author who makes his author's film puts a lot of himself into it, consciously and many times unconsciously. Mm. You know, so sure there are. My father, when I was a child, he told me, you have to be a doctor. You have to be a doctor. I want you to be, to be a doctor, to take care about the family, about the health of the family. And from the protest of the child, I decided not to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he wanted it so much that I started to hate it. So also the pressure which the film character Milan tries to make on his film it has to crash with the, the rock from the side of the child. So this is, for example, one of the little, little tiny teams there, which are coming from my personal experience. And I hope that your father is happy and proud of you right now after seeing that you're not a doctor, but you're a film director. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> he's happy with the life that I live. <laughs> That's good. I think what uh, is similar here. I mean, also with my parents, they wanted me to become someone that working in the bank, but at the end, we're, we're working in the film industry. So is that also something that is common in Slovakia, that their parents doesn't want their children to work in the creative industry? Uh, I don't really think so. Uh, actually, from the beginning of the television, and the show business, you know, people see this world also, there are divided views on it. Somebody sees it as a, as a, I don't know, crap, but people actually adore, uh, <laughs> most of the people adore the people that they see on the screen, you know, they are their heroes. So I think mostly people see that it, this, if you think from this economical point of view, it can bring some money. So it's not something that you are working in the circus. Yeah. If I can mm. use these words. Yes. But still, you know, if uh, 18 years old boy or girl says, I want to study at the Academy of Fine Arts and I want to be a conceptual artist, every parent will have this question mark, even myself, if my daughter will say <laughs> this to me, you know, sure, follow your dream, I would say, but are you sure, are you really sure that you want to, this, to do this in life because it's such a complicated career, such a yes. complicated professional environment? Would you yeah. really like to do this? Yeah, I would also question this. And, yes, I'm, coming, I, and I'm coming from this, from this uh, area, from this ambient. Yes, I think also all of parents only want their children to be happy no matter what at the end. And this is exactly. also something that your film delivers very well. Like uh, that's why also Milan decided to take whatever things that they uh, that he decided for the safety of his son and the family too. This is something that really sweet to be watched actually. So yes, Marco, I think we have already covered everything. I, I would just like uh, to ask you one last question. Do you have any project that is ongoing at the moment? 
for your next film? Sure, I'm in the process uh, of writing it. Yeah. It will be uh, the theme of the death. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, about the feeling of being alive what is, or, or, or being dead alive. Yeah. So it's quite demanding, complicated, and also the mm. process is and will be complicated. Yeah. But yeah, challenging things are important to tell. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And you, you plan to do the production by next year or we, is it we, already we, going? We, we, no, no, no. We'll, we'll see. Uh, uh, the films in Europe, because, you know, our territory, language territory is small. We are very much dependent also on the public subsidies. Mm. So we will see what that will happen. Uh, but yeah, I hope uh, that maybe within two, two years, I will start the shooting. Maybe next year. I don't know. Okay. Then I wish you a good luck the best of the good luck to find the funding to fund your film, to produce them. And hopefully by next year or by next uh, festival, we could watch your films again here in Indonesia. And thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation, for this nice talk. Um, and I will wish to your viewers to, to watch as many films as possible on this opportunity. <laughs> thank you so much, Marco. But before we uh, ending it, uh, I, I the host, Actually, just cue me to take a photo with you. So, Fina, probably could you give us a cue on how to do the photo session? Yes, of course. So, I am the host and we will do the photo session. Please show your best post and smile and I will count to three. One, two, three. Great. Let's do it one again. One, two, three. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, Fina. Thank you so much, Marco, and for joining us on your lovely Sunday. Thank you very much again to you too, and have a lovely Sunday too. Bye. You too. Bye bye. So, yes, everyone, that was our uh, Europe Oscar 2021 film talk session on this lovely Sunday, uh, 26th of. September 2021 with Mr. Marko Skop, the director of a Slovakian film that uh, just screened yesterday in Europe Oscar 2021. Uh, the title is Let There Be Life. So the film are still available. Please book them right now and watch the film until the next uh, five days. And we, also, we still also have a lot of films to be watched. Uh, that's uh, five new film also have been screened uh, this afternoon at 2 p.m. And tomorrow we will have our closing film at uh, 4.30, an Italian film, We Are the Thousand. Please join us in our virtual closing ceremony. You can uh, find out how to register and to join our closing ceremony via our uh, social media. And of course, later on, I think we will also have another film talk with my colleague, Noval Yazid. And, and again, later on in the evening, you will also see me again at 7 p.m. Uh, to talk with the director of uh, a, a Dutch film called Gold. As for the winner of today's uh, film talk uh, will be, right. So it will be uh, the Europe On Screen special gift goes to Mr. Bambang Junaidi. Uh, congratulations, Bambang. Our team from the Europe on screen will contact you on how to uh, get your uh, gift from our session. So everyone, my, I'm Menina Putri Bismurti, Festival Co-Director of Europe on Screen 2021, signing off. And I'll see you soon again tonight. And have a lovely Sunday, guys. Ciao.